Four key factors help decide where to build observatories, and in a useful PR boon, Chinese scientists say that the Tibetan Plateau fits the bill on all four. Here's what you need to know. The world's most powerful astronomical observatories are currently almost all located in the Western Hemisphere. But a new Chinese study in the journal Nature proposes that the Tibetan Plateau in China provides ideal conditions for large telescopes built in the east. Any new structures could hypothetically be built at the summit of Saishi Tang Mountain, near the town of Lenghu in Qinghai Province, where four main factors summarized by MIT's technology review site contribute to the site's suitability. The first factor is that the site has unusually clear skies, in the words of one of the study's co-authors, who spoke to Space.com, meaning it has no dense cloud formations and little light pollution. The second factor is that the local air and weather conditions are stable, with the atmosphere causing minimal interference with optical and infrared observations at night. The third factor is the site's infrastructure connections and accessibility, which are described as convenient in the study. The final factor is that the potential locations at the summit are all remote enough for their night sky views to be protected from human activity, with altitudes 100,000 square kilometers surrounding Lenghu town below 3,000 meters against Lenghu's altitudes of between 4,200 and 4,500 meters. Several smaller telescope building projects are already in development at the site, but MIT's technology review site notes that so far these plans pale in comparison with other extremely large observatories being built around the world. The Nature study frames the possibility of building these observatories in terms of China playing catch up with the West, but perhaps usefully for the country. Projects like these allow for that kind of progress while remaining relatively uncontroversial. Everyone likes space stories, and crucially, they usually involve international cooperation rather than competition for resources. A sharp contrast exists with another large-scale building project in the works in Tibet right now. Earlier this year, Chinese state media controversially announced plans to build up to 60 gigawatts of hydropower capacity in the Yarlong Zhangbo River, better known as the Brahmaputra. The mega dam would be constructed in Tibet on the Great Bend in the Brahmaputra near the disputed border with India, where water can drop up to 2,000 meters in the Yarlong Zhangbo Grand Canyon. China has already built the 510 megawatt Zhangmu Dam further upstream, according to a report by Institute for Defense Studies and Analysis cited by the Times of India. Three more dams at Dagu Jiacha and Jeshu are currently under construction, and four additional dams are planned nearby. Due to the new dam's proximity to the line of actual control, there are fears that the dam could threaten water security in India's northeast and be used as a tool in the border conflict between the two countries. Because it controls Tibet, which is considered the water tower of Asia, China controls the headwaters of 10 of Asia's 11 major rivers, but China has not entered into any water-sharing agreements with its neighbors, according to the Times of India. A 2020 study funded by the U.S. government found dams built by China and the Mekong River have driven numerous droughts in downstream countries. Though China disputes the findings, the difference between the dams and the observatories is clear. Astronomers from the University of Texas at Austin have revived a plan to build a massive 100-meter-wide mirror made of liquid on the surface of the moon. The scientists describe the importance of such a huge product in a new paper published in the Astrophysical Journal. They say a giant moon-based telescope would be able to capture light from objects nearly as old as the Big Bang. Liquid mirrors are lighter, simpler, faster to construct, and 10 times cheaper than conventional glass telescope mirrors. The key to a liquid mirror telescope is that the liquid must be rotated constantly. When the liquid rotates, gravity pulls down on its surface, while inertia pulls it sideways at the edge of the dish. As a result, the liquid forms a uniform and perfect parabola, the ideal reflecting surface for a telescope. Work is underway to find the perfect mix of liquids as it requires a liquid metal to drift on top of other liquids, plus a thin layer of material on top to minimize evaporation. Liquid mirrors usually use mercury, but that won't work on the moon as mercury will freeze in the very cold moon temperatures. Since its launch in December 2019, Europe's KEPS Space Telescope has gathered some very interesting information about a very strange planet far outside our solar system. The KEPS Space Telescope is basically a satellite that orbits 700 kilometers above Earth and it's packed with sensitive optical equipment. 
The first extrasolar planet that Kaups has focused on is called WASP 189b. This planet was first detected in 2018. It's a gas giant like Jupiter and is situated 322 light years away. That's more than 3,000 trillion kilometers from Earth. Kaups found that WASP 189b is about 22,400 kilometers in diameter, that's almost 18 times larger than Earth and 1.6 times larger than Jupiter. At the same time, this large planet orbits much closer to its star. Where it takes Earth 365 days to orbit our Sun, this faraway planet takes only 2.7 Earth days to orbit its huge star. The star around which this exoplanet orbits is bigger and hotter than Earth's Sun. In fact, the star burns so hot that it looks blue. It is 2.4 times bigger and 2,000 degrees Celsius hotter than Earth's Sun. Kaups also found that the exoplanet's blue star is visibly wider around its equator. That's because it spins so fast that it's being pulled to the outside around its equator. So the star looks a bit oval. The star's poles are also hotter than its cooler equator. Now add the fact that WASP-189b orbits 20 times closer to its hot star than Earth orbits to our cooler Sun, and you can understand why the exoplanet is so incredibly hot. At a surface temperature of 3,200 degrees Celsius, even iron turns to gas on this planet. That's why scientists call it an ultra-hot Jupiter. Hot Jupiters are giant gas planets like Jupiter, but they orbit very close to their stars, making them extremely hot. Another thing that makes this exoplanet very different from the planets in our solar system is the fact that it does not rotate around its star's equator. Instead, its orbit is so extremely tilted that it passes close to the star's poles. Scientists think this must be because the gravity of other planets or stars pulled the planet into its strange orbit. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.